So, oscilloscopes. Uh, today we're looking at oscilloscopes. There's a picture of one, or a diagram, I suppose. Uh, you don't need to know the intricate ins and outs of what all these things do, but if that interests you, then there's a link below where I got the picture from. You can figure out how to use an oscilloscope and make sense of all the stuff. We only really care uh, about this dial and this dial. We'll talk more about them uh, in a sec. First, we've just got to think about why we might use an oscilloscope. An oscilloscope is essentially a posh voltmeter. Um, it's a posh voltmeter in that it allows you to measure the changing voltage of something uh, against time. So you see the voltage on the y-axis, time on the x-axis. Uh, and actually where we come across these in the, in the GCC is not in the uh, electricity topic, as you would think. The voltage is actually in the, the waves topic. We tend to think about them when we're looking at sounds. Now, a voltmeter on its own isn't going to tell you much about sound. You're going to need to connect a microphone. So, here you go, here's my best microphone picture. There you go. There you go. It's a, I don't know what it looks like, hedgehog in a wine glass, maybe. There's a microphone, and we connect the microphone to our oscilloscope. It's got lots of dials on. Um, and then what happens is the microphone obviously turns the sound energy into electrical energy. So we've got a microphone, we've got our, os our oscilloscope, um, and what we're going to be able to do is start taking some measurements and some calculations. Uh, there's a couple of terms that, that are linked in with this topic. The pitch and the loudness are both sort of real world terms that we'd use. Pitch, as you know, is linked to the frequency of the wave, and the loudness is linked to the amplitude of the wave. So a big amplitude means a loud sound, a high frequency means a high pitch sound. So that's one of the things where oscilloscopes are useful for comparing different sound waves. As I said earlier, you've got uh, the time base on the bottom. Okay, so it's time on the bottom. And you've got voltage on the side. And one of those dials you saw earlier on uh, were the time scale and the voltage scale. And the way that it works is you see something like this where it says voltage two volts slash div that means two volts per division so if this is our zero line each box is worth two volts similarly each box is worth two volts again okay. minus as well um, and then in the time time base or on the time axis if you wish uh, each one represents 0.5. I'm going to pick 0.5. Choose to make it difficult for myself. Um, so let's do every other one. So we've got basically a graph. Okay. So the way to think about oscilloscopes for traces are they're just graphs, and these per division things tell you what the scale of the graph is. Okay. So Let's have a look. Here's an example stolen from another website. Uh, yeah, hopefully, it's another link coming floating on the screen. Um, and we're told the time base is five milliseconds. Now, often the time base on these waves will be in milliseconds, so you've got to make sure you're happy with milliseconds. Remember, five milliseconds is the same as five times ten to the minus three seconds, or five thousandths of a second. Uh, or 0.005. Okay, so that is not meters seconds. No, why would I even write that? It's stupid. Um, it is milliseconds. Okay, so often the scale on this is less than a second. Um, so we're told that's our scale. So the first thing that's really easy to do is actually just to write that on there. Um, so we're going to say it's in milliseconds to save faffing around. So we've got 0, 5, 10, 15. 20, 25, etc. 24, maybe 35, and that's a 40. It's just like a graph. Um, and we're also told, we're not told the amplitude because we don't really care too much. Um, but we could be, we could have been told that and we could have worked some stuff out. But we're looking at the time base at the moment. If we know the time base, we can work out the time period. Okay, remember the time period is the time taken to complete, uh, for one complete wave to pass a point. Uh, so, if we started here, okay, let's show my 
pro wave drawing powers. One complete wave would be to there, wouldn't it? Because it started here, it went down to a negative maximum, back to zero, back to a positive maximum, and back to zero again. That's one complete wave. Okay. However, similarly, I'll find the undo button. I could have drawn from this trough all the way up down to this trough. Okay, that would be a complete wave. Um, I could have uh, keep working the colours. Tend to I tend to start a wave at a zero, go up to a maximum, down to zero, down to a negative maximum, back to zero. So that's a complete wave. Okay. Uh, the last one. I've not done this one as well. The last one. Oh wait. The last one, I know I've lost half my scale there, um, would be from peak to peak. Um, get my colours right, that'd be wonderful. So that was a 10 there, wasn't it? So it would be from peak to peak. So it would go from here, all the way down, back up to the peak. All of those represent a complete wave, okay? Note that is not a complete wave, that's half a wave, okay? So don't get confused. So remember we said time taken is the time, sorry, time period is the time taken for a complete wave to pass a point. So if we start from naught, does that make sense? Okay, it goes from naught all the way up to 20 milliseconds. Uh, often though, they'll want you to calculate a frequency. Okay, so you have to use the relationship between time period and frequency, which is good. I had someone say it. Uh, frequency is one over time period. Okay, so here that would be 1 divided by 0 0.02, because that's what 20 milliseconds is, which is 50 hertz. Okay. You can see the time period is the same for the second wave, from 20 milliseconds up to 40 milliseconds. Okay, just be careful that you pick a whole wave. So before we do any more calculations, uh, again, some acquired pictures there, the link if you want to go have a look. Um, pause now, well after I've asked you these questions, but have a think which wave has the highest pitch, which is the loudest, which is the highest frequency, which is the lowest frequency, and which waves have the same volume. Okay, so first one, which is the highest pitch? Um, pitch is linked to frequency, so we can actually answer one and three at the same time, which is the highest frequency, might be an easy one for you to think about. High frequency means you get a lot of waves per second, short time period, so those are both going to be five. Loudness, we said it was linked to amplitude, and four's obviously got the biggest amplitude. Okay, it's twice as big as the next biggest one. Lowest frequency, um, we're looking at which is the longest, which wave takes the longest time to pass. Uh, if you look at number one, uh, it's about three squares between this point and this point. Um, whereas the next, uh, these ones are two, uh, this one is uh, about one. So clearly there's the lowest frequency. We could also set the greatest time period. Um, which have the same volume, we said volume linked to amplitude, so that's going to be one and two. Okay. So we might not need to just be sort of uh, describing it, we might need to actually do some calculations. So for each of these you can work out the amplitude in volts, you can work out the time period, remember, watch out for milliseconds, and the frequency for Q, honest. Okay, so think about, it's got to be one complete wave, Okay, think about the fact that we start from a central zero line. Okay, um, have a pause and have a go at working out each of those things. Try not to just skip ahead. I know what you are, what you think. Okay, so hopefully you didn't just skip ahead. Um, so the amplitude of this one is five. Okay, because that zero line and that's plus five and that's minus five. So the amplitude there is. 5 volts. Time period is 300, so from this point here to this point here, uh, it's 
well, you've got two whole boxes and two half boxes. So that's three whole boxes, each box worth 100 milliseconds. So you've got 300 milliseconds, which is 0.3 seconds. For instance, one divided by time period gives us our 3.33 hertz. Okay, hopefully looking through those, I've not made any mistakes. I'm not really with it today, so that's quite possible. I've already made several mistakes in this video and hopefully cut them out. Um, so hopefully you can do that. Uh, I've got that page again. You could also, in theory, be asked to go the other way. I think you'd be a bit hard done by if you were, but you could be asked to sort of work backwards. So remember, the, the trick is, with all of these, is just to write the scales on the side. Okay. So we're doing the voltage scale here. It's nice and simple. And then the time scale, 20. Um, change that thickness of that pen. So we're told uh, it's one div per, so we've used the scales and worked that out. So the amplitude is three volts, so we know it's not gonna go above this point here. And we know it's not gonna go below this point here because that's the amplitude of three volts. We're told the frequency is 6.25 Hertz. Okay, so first thing we need to say is frequency is one over time period. Uh, more useful would be say time period is 1 over frequency so we do 1 divided by 6.25 which hopefully equals 0.16 seconds just trying to find a calculator to check that 0 0.16 uh, which still isn't super helpful because that's in seconds. We need it in milliseconds. So 0 0.16 seconds is 160 milliseconds. If you're not comfortable with prefix calculations, then I'll probably do another video for that at some point. So we're told that that's the time period. So that's the time for a complete wave. So that's 160 seconds. Okay, so that's a complete wave. If we started here, we would end there. We know it's symmetrical, so it's going to hit the middle point there. And we know it's going to peak at 3 volts and then we know it's going to trough at minus 3 volts and then it's just a case of joining the dots ish okay and then you'd obviously repeat it So you could be asked to do that, but all we did was the same same work we did earlier on just backwards. Okay? So the trick with oscilloscopes is just treat them as graphs. Okay, this per division is just a scale. Okay, that's all it is. Just apply the scale, so write it onto your graph, make it easy. Lots of people get caught out by milliseconds, so make sure you're happy with milliseconds. And people tend to say here that the, the frequency is 160. It's the time period is 160, you would then use the calculation up here to find out that the frequency is 6.25. The very last thing you might be asked to do uh, on this sort of question would be uh, you might be told that the speed is something, let's say 330, and one of them earlier was 5 hertz. Um, so you'd say V equals F lambda, and then you'd say V over F equals lambda gives us 330 over 5, so 66 meters. So you might be asked to just do some work there. Okay. Hopefully that's helped with the oscilloscopes. Any questions, stick them in the comments.